uplift the lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson. Eh, eh, uh, eh, eh, wanna share my soul, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh. This is for me and this is Ali. Ali. This is for me because this God breathes. Yeah, the Holy Spirit, hope you hear it. Uh, Things look clearer when you look in the mirror. In the mirror. Walking down the valley because he led me. Fed me from the pages with the red uh-huh. ink. Translated for my boys with the rock ready. Heat under the seat inside the box. The box it. Listen, man, I was sleep, I was dead. Uh, Been transformed, I'm a sheep, now I'm led. Yeah. Away from the edge, gotta do what it said. Back to the message Let's take your way back to my mama's Lexus In uh-huh. 96, I let it knock Just for the beat it, it was a beast Tan brown with butter seat I'm far from my hermit tribe But just a permit hey. Fifteen is swerving All I got to learn Is a little big and pop Say what tea I played Marvin Gaye Through the Maywood street What's going on is not a secret of mine uh-huh. The good Lord said If you seek, you would find Five, four yeah. years I'm the preacher in line With rhymes that can speak to the time I got so He gave me so much, so uh, He gave me too much, so I'm just a king with a dream So I sing on the Lord, I'm a lame So, you got, so we got, so And the Lord God hey, formed a man From the hey, dust of the hey, ground yeah. And he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, yeah. and a man became, what it become, man, a living soul, that's right, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, but no sweat going that summer me, I'm fly man, winter, fall, summer, spring, uh, young boy call me old school, they say I'm so cool and I'm no fool, they like the perspective I seem to bring, I guess that's how it is when you sing to things, I've been high, I top of ten terrorists. I've seen men die, I've seen men perish. Still, never losing focus, of course. My eyes on the throne, my hopes in the Lord. He gives keys that can open the door, and he's about to open it more. I got so That was on point, wasn't it? I love that. <laughs> yes. Thank you, thank you. You're too kind. <laughs> Welcome to another Sunday with us with your boy Dre. And as you all know, I am Dre. And I'll tell you what, I say it a lot. I say it all the time. I, I say it quite often. But I really do move this time, not that I didn't move the last time or the time before that last time or even that last time before that very last time. I missed you guys. I really did. 
and I'm so glad you took out just a small amount of your time to enjoy another Sunday with us with your boy Trey. I tell you what, it's been a long week, and I tell you what, I am so, so ready to get this going. Because you know what? I don't do it for me. I do it for y'all. I do it because I love you guys, and I genuinely, genuinely care about you. You know what? The first uh, thing we're going to jump into the first segment tonight, I tell you what, it's uh, a segment that uh, actually uh, one of the uh, uh, young men in the church uh, listened to uh, the uh, show. He, uh, I watched him in the link, and he listened to it uh, about uh, about a month and a half ago, and he's been asking me uh, uh if I would do it again and uh, hit me up at church and uh, kind of cornered me and asked me if I would do it. And I said, okay, I'll do it. He said he thought that was hilarious. And uh, it's a segment that I introduced about five months ago, and it's called uh, The Church Play Too Much. And I tell you what, <laughs> the church does play too much. And sometimes we're just playing church. But you know what? I tell you what, the reason why the church play too much is because sometimes there's things that go on in the church that don't make no doggone sense, okay? It ain't got nothing to do with God. It's all about man. And we've got to take man out of the church and put God back in there because the church is just out of control. It's off the chain. The church is playing too much. Church, time to get serious. Now, again, uh, you could be going to this church. Could be a family member going to this type of church. Could be a, a, a friend, a co-worker, a stranger in the street. But I'm telling you, if you go into this type of church, you need to get out. You need to disconnect yourself from that body because you know what? It ain't serious. They playing too much. Here we go. The church play too much. Uh, number one, uh, the church play too much. Let me ask you a question. How much money does the building fund have to raise before you start seeing somebody start working on the actual building? You know what? I, there have been churches that have had a building fund going on for 20, 30 years. And you ain't seen not one brick, not one shovel of dirt moved or nothing. How much money do you have to start start raising and get to on a building fund before somebody decides, you know what? I guess it's time to start working on the building. Because that's just that. Thing. Number two, you know what? The church play too much. Oh, Lord Jesus. Why did the church quit giving people change back? You know what? Well, it used to be a time in the church where, you know, if you handed somebody a crisp $5 bill, you know, the usher, a crisp $5 bill, and they put it in that basket, and, and you, you held up four fingers, they gave you four $1 bills back. But now if you give them a crisp $5 bill and you hold up four fingers, they might mess around and give you one back. And it's the one finger you probably don't want. I'm just saying, the church played too much, okay? Number three, the church played too much. Look here. Why is it, and y'all know this, especially if you've been to one of them churches, boy, whether it's a, it's a Pentecostal or Baptist church, of God, y'all know. Why is it you always got some old lady that get up to testify and then ask the church to help her sing a song that she just made up? Why is that? What kind of sense does that make? Now, they expect you to help them sing a song that they are making up along the way. And then they expect the, 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 the musician to play music to keep up with the song that she's making up along the way. Come on, now. The church played too much. Sit her down. Number four, the church played too much. Oh, my God. Now, now I ask this question. Now, I'll tell you what. This is, this is just a question. Why is it that the tambourine player Ain't never at choir rehearsal. Ask yourself. Every Sunday you got that tambourine player that's just playing, 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 just tambourine and they wrist off. But they ain't never at choir rehearsal. Is it Ebenezer Baptist Church? Mass choir? Oh, featuring the tambourine player. When have you ever heard of the Mississippi Mass Choir featuring? The microphone stand, said a rapper. I'm just saying, come on. Get that tambourine and, and, and player in, in, in the choir rehearsal. Don't let them stand out. Include them. This one right here, number five, the church plays too much. Why is it that the pastor don't sing, but he be hollering all the words to the song? You know what, that's one thing that disturbs me. It really does. You know, you got pastors, and some of them can sing. They really do have a beautiful voice. 
But instead of singing the song at, at, at a normal pitch, they just screaming the song into the microphone, and they get the microphone turned all the way up. You can't even enjoy, you can't even get your praise on because you got your ears covered. Come on now, Pastor, tone that thing down. Sing for the Lord, not for your own ego. Come on. Now this one right here. See the church play too much. Look here. <laughs> why? Oh, why do people in charge of the couple's ministry going through divorce? I don't understand that. How are you going to be in charge of a couple's ministry and, 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 and you ain't finna be a couple no more? Make that make sense. See, the church plays too much. There's certain people in positions that they ain't got no business being in. Step down, okay? This one right here. See, the church plays too much. Why you can't never get nothing out of the church food bank? Because the account always empty. See, they sell for church food bank, but they never no food in the food bank. I, I don't understand that. Who's eating the food at the food bank? And if they're eating the food, how come ain't nobody depositing nothing back? Ask yourself that. See, the church play too much. This one right here. Uh, the church play too much. See, why is the church selling fish plates for $10? And then when you look on the aluminum foil, it's five fish sticks and a small bag of Dorito potato chips. See, uh, and, and, and I'm going to tell you right now, the church is trying to make you feel guilty by pressuring you and buying them doggone high-priced, overpriced fish plates, okay? And then you pay all this money for these, this fish plate, and then you get it, ain't nothing but a couple of fish sticks and a little bag of chips, something that cost them about 16 cents to make or put together, and you just pay $5 for it. Come on now. Stop that. The church plays too much. I'm not doing it no more. I bet I don't. Just right here. <laughs> See, the church plays too much. Why is it that the pastor is teaching Wednesday Bible study wearing yoga pants? Talking about he uh, just came from working out. You know what? If you, would, if you call yourself teaching me anything in the church wearing uh, yoga pants, talking about you done worked out, you best believe I'm going to be walking out. Come on now. Come on now. Put that thing away. Nobody want to see your, your, your sword. That's the wrong kind of sword. Don't be displaying that. Again, the church plays too much now. Stop playing and get serious about this thing. I, again, I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing it for y'all because I want to help y'all, okay? Now, this next thing, I'll tell you what, this has always been, always been my my, well, it, it's definitely one of my top three segments of, of, of all because this is an out of order segment. And now, this out of order, I tell you what, the reason why I like to do an out of order is because there's some people out there that really don't understand or realize that they're living in an out of order type of life, that they're uh, operating in an out of order situation. And it's my duty, it's my obligation to help people that are. Out of order, get what? In order. Now, you know what? Out of order could be you. It's your food. It could be a family member. It could be a, 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 a friend. It could be a co-worker. It could be a stranger in the street, somebody you see at your local grocery store or at the local bank or somebody you pass as you're walking through the park on a beautiful, sunny, but chilly day. I just believe it's our obligation and our duty to point out things to people that are out of order to help them do what? Get in order. Again, if you don't recognize any of these and anybody you know, that's because all of them are here and you're out of order. Get your life in order. Here we go. <laughs> Let's kick this thing off. Out of order. If this is you, you show enough out of order. Lord Jesus. <laughs> If you go to a church where your pastor is in the pool pit preaching and he got a weave on top of his bald spot. See, he's living a lot like that. He's living a lot. He operating in a lot. How he going to teach you anything about morality and Christian values if he up there with a bald spot with a hair weave in? Come on now. Get that thing in order. Get connected to the right type of church with the right type of body of Christ. Be welcome. If this is you, you out of order. Lord Jesus. <laughs> Look here. 
If you're sitting in the church and you undressing members of the motherboard with your eyes, talking about, mm, 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 I bet you wearing a lace slip. You know what? That don't make no dumb no sense. You out of order. Get your mind right. Get your mind on Christ. If this is you, you out of order. Lord Jesus. <laughs> Look here now. Your body is a temple. It should be a temple for God. And take care of your body. Don't be putting all that bad stuff in and quit overeating. Quit making yourself unhealthy. Okay? Gluttony is one of the seven deadly sins. If this is you and you're operating in a gluttonous lifestyle, you're out of order. Here it is. If this is you, you're out of order. If you didn't eight and eight to the point where your stomach is so big that it's always hurting because every time you walk, you kick it. You out of order. If your belly is hanging down so low, where you every time you walk, you kicking, you kicking your second stomach. You know what? You out of order. Get that thing in order, okay? Okay. I just want you to live healthy, please. If this is you, you show sure look out of order. Look here now. If your feet smell so bad that you got to walk around with lifesavers and breath mints in your shoes, you out of order. Why don't you just wash your feet? Don't you think that'd be better? Don't you think it'll last longer? Don't you think, think it'd be a little cheaper? It'll definitely be more sanitary. Come on now. Not only do your feet smell, but now you got ants in your shoes. Come on now. Get that back in order. Don't do that. Look here, women. If you got a wig on that's so dirty, it's got damage your pants. You know what? If you ain't washing your wig, you got to be ashamed of yourself. That's just nasty beyond control. It don't make no doggone sense. If this is you, you out of order. If your doctor give you some bad news, and because he gives you bad news, you get a bad attitude and decide you're not going to pay the bill, you out of order. What? Why do you do that at? Huh? This man owes you the truth as a medical professional. They got to tell you what you want to hear just to appease you. If there's something going on wrong with you, he's supposed to tell you. But you're upset because he ain't told you you got something wrong with your body. You need to take care, better care of yourself and you get upset. You get an attitude. And then you don't pay the bill. Come on now. Get that thing in order. Do better and be better. If this is you, you showing up out of order. Oh, Jesus. If you take your seven-year-old daughter to get her belly button pierced, you know what? Yeah, you show enough out of order for that. If this is you, you show enough out of order. Now, if you grow, but you at McDonald's playing on the slide with other people's kids, wait a minute, now, right there, that right there will get you cut up and shot up. That'll get your head busted wide open. That'll, that'll mess around and make me expose your brain. I catch you on the McDonald's slide with my kids. You grow. Feel good. That's not make me lose my religion. Anyway, quit doing that. Play with people your own age and size. And this is you, you showing up out of order. If you got nose hair that's so long, people actually think you got a mustache. You know what? Trim that thing. Trim that thing. Trim them hairs in their nostrils. Okay? And this is you, you showing up out of order. If you ask the judge to put you on house arrest and you homeless, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you know what? You didn't commit the crime, <laughs> and you and you in court, and you you request the judge put you on house arrest and you homeless. So basically, you just go anywhere. You free. You know what? <laughs> you out of order. Get that thing in order. I hope they throw you in the cell and they forget the key. Again, I'm going to be a blessing and <laughs> not a curse. I'm happy I'm not. Uh, but this is you. You show no kind of order. Mm-hmm. Oh, Jesus. That, oh, Lord, Jesus. This one right here. Women, look here. If you're so nasty and dirty that your favorite black bra started out as your favorite white bra, you out of order. Come on now. Clean that bra. Bleach that bra. You bought the bra 
white. And he didn't want a bra and said then turn black. Watch the bra. Return it to its original color. Not only will you feel better, but the people that got to smell you and be around your stanky butt will feel better. Thank you. Oh, you are. If this is you, you show enough out of water. Look here, if you feed your goldfish fish sticks, you know what? Goldfish food can't be that expensive, okay? Well, you got to break up little pieces of fish sticks and feed the goldfish. Basically, you turn the goldfish into cannibal. Get that thing in order and get you some fish food for them goldfish. If this is you, you show enough out of water. Now, I can understand you bonding with your child, you know, and you want to teach your child things, you know, and want to be a role model and, and show them different things, you know, that, that you've learned. And maybe something that was passed on to you from, 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 from one of your parents or, 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 or you know, somebody, uh, an elder statesman or a stateswoman in your family. But you know what? Not everything that, 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 that somebody taught you is, is supposed to be passed on uh, for you to teach somebody else. You know, like your child. And if this is you, you show me what I don't want. If you showing your six year old son or daughter how to roll a blunt, you know what? <sighs> Again, I, 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 I just, I, I just want to be a blessing and not a curse. Please stop doing that. And finally, if, if this is you, you show me what I don't want. <laughs> if you're on your way to take a drug test for your new job and get pulled over and arrested for D-U-I. Wow. You know what? It's probably a good thing because the chances are if you get arrested uh, or uh, D-U-I, you probably wasn't going to pass a drug test anyway. Hello. Goodbye. Anyway, I just want to be a blessing and not a curse. I want to help people because that's what I do. I love helping people. Now, see this here. This next segment, and I tell you what, I love this segment because it just asks a question. What the hell? As in, what were you thinking? What the hell? What are you doing? What the hell? How are you living? And we ask them questions because we see people doing things and, and, and living in certain ways or operating in certain situations, and we and it makes no sense. We're like, what the, What are you doing? So, I'm just going to ask the question. Again, it could be you. It could be a family member. It could be a, a friend, a co-worker, a stranger in the street, somebody you see at the local bank or local grocery store, or somebody you pass as you're walking through the park on a beautiful sunny bus. It's like the chill day. We have to ask those questions. And you know what? When we ask those questions, we should get answers. But what the hell? Here we go. Number one, what the hell? Why are you at a buffet restaurant drinking a Diet Coke? Wait a minute. Don't that defeat the purpose? You eat all that food out the the buffet. But I, I guess you, you think it makes it better because you're drinking a Diet Coke. So you're chasing uh, 70,000 calories with one calorie or a, a Diet Coke. Come on now. Come on now. Stop that. Don't make no sense. What the hell? What are you doing? Number two, what the hell? Why do you get... Baby hair, and your hair is nappy. You know what? Somebody got some nappy baby hair. That's a, you know what? That's a different type of real nappy baby hair. Cause that means it's real thin, it's real fine, but it's coarse, meaning it's rough. Anybody that's got some rough baby hair, Lord Jesus, there's something going on. That's spiritual right there. That's a, that's a demonic hair follicle growing on the top of your scalp. What the hell? Oh, number three. What the hell? Why are you an alcoholic working in a liquor store? Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. That's just too much temptation. That's just too much temptation. You didn't set yourself up for failure. Uh, number four. What the hell? Uh, let me care. Why is it that there ain't no, it's never any handicapped parking spaces at a Special Olympics event? Hmm. I'm going to ask that again. What the hell? Why is it there ain't no 
handicapped parking spaces at a Special Olympics event. Technically, that should be all there is. Every space should be, you know, I'm going to walk away from that. But that needs to be addressed and fixed. Number five, what the hell? Why are you walking around with a blind seeing eye dog? Now you and the dog both bumping into stuff. You know what? Number six, what the hell? Oh my gosh. You see a homeless man with a no trespassing sign. So what, you can't come outside? Because they're homeless, that's where they live outside. So you got, you know what? The devil is allowed. I'm not going to stay in my house because. You know, Boy, <laughs> oh my God. Move right along. This next segment is uh, a segment I'm very proud of because, um, you know, uh, with the way this country is right now, uh, there stands uh, somewhat of a divide. I don't, you know, some people may blame it on the current uh, administration, uh, some people may blame it on just old fashioned racism and uh, injustice uh, that has. Uh, uh, crept its way back into the forefront uh, of mainstream society. Uh, but the bottom line, there's something that happens. Uh, there's some issues that take place. There's some situations that occur, and it doesn't matter whether you're black, white, whether you're Asian, whether you're um, Hispanic. It, it doesn't matter because it, it, it has nothing to do with race or a nationality. What's wrong is wrong. Here it is. This segment is called What You May Not Know. Again, number one. If you don't think you got a crackhead in your family, what you may not know is you may be the crackhead in your family. Number two, what you may not know. If everybody's complaining about the bad smell in the room except you, what you may not know is you may be the one who's stinking. Hmm. A little insight. Number three, what you may not know. If every time you talk to people, they lean back, they ain't dancing. What you may not know is you may have extremely toxic breath. Number four, what you may not know. If you have to take pain medicine before you comb your hair, what you may not know is you may have a severe case of nappy head hmm, I can Google that. Get in my medical book and see what the treatment is for that. Number five, what you may not know. If the water in your bathtub looks clear before you get in it, but looks like Dr. Pepper when you get out of it, what you might know is you may need to shower before you take your bath. I'm just saying. Number six, what you may not know. If people can smell your breath, even with your mouth closed, what you may not know is you may need to learn sign language. Mm-hmm. Number seven, what you may not know. If your pants are so tight, you get dizzy when you bend over. What you may not know is you may need to invest in some sweat pain. Yeah. Number eight, what you may not know. If you go to get a pedicure, and they soak your feet in ammonia before they touch your toe, what you may not know is you may need to throw away all your open toe shoes. Mm. Number nine, what you may not know. If your dish is always the one that no one eats at the office potluck, what you may not know is you may want to just bring bags of chips the next time, preferably unopened. Number 10, 
What you may not know, if your spouse is always racing you to go to sleep first, what you may not know is you may have a serious snoring problem. And they just trying to get as much rest as they can before you start calling them hogs. I'm just saying. Again, I, I'm happy and I want to be a blessing and not a curse. Uh, this uh, last segment is called That's a Donkey. And I tell you what, that's a donkey. Is, it, is, it is what it is. It, it, he all that's a donkey. As one of people call jackass. And, and you know what? Some people out there, that's exactly what they act like. That's, a, that's the type of spirit they operate in. And you know what? You might be the donkey. Your family member might be a donkey. Your uh, friend might be a donkey. Your co-worker might be a donkey. A stranger in the street might be a donkey. But there are donkeys out there. If you've never met a donkey, that's because you ain't looked at the mirror. You're the donkey. Again, stop being a donkey. But I'm going to help you recognize what a donkey looks like, what a donkey does, how a donkey operates, how a donkey thinks. Here we go. That's a donkey. Number one, that's a donkey. Look here. You're in a getaway car that breaks down and you call AAA. See, that's a donkey. Hang on, hang on. Number two, that's a donkey. You're outside the courthouse selling food stamps. You know what? You're going to jail. <laughs> they're going to they're gonna march you right upstairs into the courtroom and arrest you. That's a donkey. Hee-haw, hee-haw. Number three, that's a donkey. You bought cheap charcoal, and it's really not lighting. So you're using gasoline as lighter fluid. See, you're going to blow yourself up. That's a donkey. Hee-haw, hee-haw. Number four, that's a donkey. You're applying for a job installing home security systems, and you've been in jail for breaking into people's houses. You know what? They ain't going to hire you. That's a donkey. He home. Number five. That's a donkey. Every time your job have a potluck, your wife and kids just happen to show up. You know what? <laughs> it, it, it ain't no family reunion. That's a donkey. He home. Number six. That's a donkey. You're at McDonald's, and you order a cheeseburger, but tell them to hold the cheese. You're going to pay that extra 30 cents? Just to make a whole of cheese on a cheeseburger? You know what they call that? A hamburger. That's a donkey. He haul. Number six. <laughs> That's a donkey. You call your kids and ask them to come spend the weekend with you and you in jail. You know what? He haul, he haul, he haul. That's a donkey. Number eight. That's a donkey. Wow. Your girl take a home pregnancy test. And it comes up positive. And you don't believe her. <laughs> and says she should get a second opinion. So you go pee on the stick. You know what? That's a donkey. He haw, he haw, he haw. Stop that. Don't make no donk on sense. Finally, we get to the church announcement. Now, I, uh, oh, I please, please, I, I, I invite you to join us uh, in the sanctuary or as we stream live. Uh, for we are the uh, Jesus take the wheel, I got the gas, Baptist Church. We are small in number, but we are big on faith. I say we are small in number, but we are big in faith. The reason why I like to do the church announcement is because I want to make sure that everybody is kept abreast of what's going on. Everybody's on one accord, that the body is united, and there's no saint left behind. I like to do the church announcements for the individuals that were unable to attend, for the sick that did it, and the shed it up ill. Also, I'd like to do the church announcements for individuals that may have been in the sanctuary but missed some part or all of the announcements because they're busy running their mouth, yapping and yapping about things they have absolutely no proof of. Okay? Just because that looks like me and the crime stopper doesn't mean that was me. The name was spelled wrong. My name is spelled with a capital A. They spell their name with a lowercase. I'm just saying. Of course, it looked like me, but again, that ain't how I spell my name. Move right along. That's number one. Look here. Uh, Deacon Russell, don't let this cross on my neck fool you. You let me catch you hugging my wife from behind again and see when I jump on your back by the hole in the top of your head because I want to see what you was thinking. <laughs> don't let me put these hands on you. <laughs> 
because I won't be playing or praying. That's number two. Look here, next person park in the handicapped spot. If you ain't got no sticker on your car, uh, I'm going to kick a, a, a dent in your dough myself. And I'm going to charge you for my church seat. Number three, uh, look here. <sighs> All right. Please, mothers of the church, don't bring Halloween candy and give it out to the children for Christmas. That's nasty. Then we get to the part of the uh, nonsense that's always uh, full of intrigue. Uh, I look forward to not looking forward to it. It's got mystery. It's got humor. It's got drama. It's got uh, adventure. It's got uh, unpredictability to it. It is the building fund. Uh, and uh, as of today, the building fund is raised. In our quote, as of today, the building fund has raised the level of tension within the church. The devil is alive. Well, Lord, I'd like to uh, thank you for joining us for another Sunday with us today. Like I always like to do, I'm going to pray us out. So I ask that please, all heads are bowed, all eyes are closed, unless, of course, you're, well, you're blind. It, it really don't matter, does it? I mean, seriously, really, for real. Oh, Lord, thank you for another Sunday with us. Thank you for another opportunity to come together for fun, faith, and fellowship. Thank you for opening doors that no man can shut. Thank you for making a way in a no way. Thank you for being a lawyer in the courtroom, a doctor in the sick room. But most of all, we thank you for being God and God alone, loving us more than we could ever love you or even ourselves. Now, we give you honor, praise, and glory. And we worship your name. Amen. Now, to the next time, which will be the best time, I will see you next Sunday. It's going to be more nuts with more Drake because I'm going to eat me a little bite of something and put on the way. I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. If you try to stop my love, I'll hurt you. I'll hurt you back because my love hurts. It's pain, but it's pleasure. You all take care, and I'll see you next time. You all have a great week. God bless.
I make 